it's Rebecca from Book Room Reflections and I thought we would do something slightly different with this month's wrap up. So there are two hobbies I'm really passionate about. One of those is reading, obviously, and the second one is roller derby. Now if you don't know what roller derby is, I'll link some information in the description box below. But basically roller derby is a sport that is played on an oval track on roller skates, quad roller skates to be precise, and you have two teams made up of five players and each player when they're on track has a different role. So the one team is here, the other team is next to them and basically there is one person who is a point scorer or a jammer and they have to get through both teams and every person that they pass on the opposing team gives them a point. It's a bit confusing, but hopefully you can pick it up along the way. And I thought I would kind of marry my two hobbies together by doing a wrap up with roller derby. So welcome to my January roller derby reading wrap up. So for each team, there is one point scorer called the jammer. So on one team, it will be me. I will be the reader who is the jammer who can score points. And on the other team, it will be my TBR. So I'm literally playing against my TBR. The way this is gonna work is that my TBR gets a point for every book that I haul during the month. And for me to score a point, I need to read or DNF or unhaul in some way some books to get points. It's kind of similar to balancing the books, but with a roller derby twist. And then as the year goes on, I'm gonna throw in some penalties in there as well. And then by the end of the year, there will be a total for me and a total for my TBR and whoever wins. I haven't figured out the prize yet, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. It'll be an experiment that we'll learn together. First of all, I thought I would go through the books I hauled this month. I'm not gonna actually give you much information about what the books are because I feel like when I haul books, I don't fully know what they're about and I don't want to mislead you. Um, but if you are interested, I will link the books in the description below. So the books that I picked up this month that I hauled were A Man Called Uwe by Frederick Backman, The Holiday by T.M. Logan, The Catch by T.M. Logan, Jade My Autobiography by Jade Goody, The Romanovs by Simon Sebag Montefiore, The Body Keeps the Score by Bethel van der Kolk, Seven Devils by Elizabeth May and Laura Lamb, The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp, He Started It by Samantha Downing, The Brethren by John Grisham, I Love the Bones of You by Christopher Eccleston, Winter Keep by Kristen Kishore, Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer, The Shadow Sister by Lucinda Riley, Hidden Valley Road by Robert Colker. This was provided to me by the publisher, so thank you for the review copy. Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. This was another review copy, so thank you to the publisher for the arc. And that takes us up to 16 books. So already I am on zero points and my TBR is on 16. Next, we're gonna go through the books that I hauled and read during the month. In 2021, I'm trying to be better about reading the books as I haul them because it's more likely that I'm gonna enjoy those books. But I'm not exactly winning with that. The first book I read and hauled was Wildfire by Alona Andrews. This is the third book in the Hidden Legacy series and I gave it three stars. And it follows Nevada Baylor and her family who run an investigation agency and they live in an alternative world where people have superpowers, a lot of money, and quite often they're sociopathic. Now I am a huge Alona Andrews fan. Absolutely love the Kate Daniel series and the Edge series, but there's something about the Hidden Legacy series that I, I just can't get to. It starts to feel a bit more formulaic. And with this one, I didn't like the staccato writing voice and it just got a bit too predictable for me. I also didn't like how the family reacted to somebody else's trauma. It was just kind of glossed over and they bantered about it and I felt it could have been handled a lot more sensitively. I am going to continue on with the series and I already have continued on with the series, but I'm not holding out much hope that this is the series for me. That being said, I know some people who absolutely love it and love the romance, but I don't know, it just doesn't measure up to Kate and Curran for me. The next book is This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. I feel like everyone on booktube has read this book apart from me and I wasn't going to pick it up but I thought I'm missing out here. Four more kicked in and I picked it up and I'm so glad I did because this was my first five star read of the month. Um, this is a non-fiction about a man who was a junior doctor in the NHS for a few years and it basically is hilarious and heartbreaking at the same time. I read it in a day and it's told in diary entries. 
um, but it's very accessible and it has a very funny writing voice and oh, man, I just love this book. I devoured it and I kept turning to Robert to like tell him funny things or like really sad things and I think he's probably not going to pick it up because of that because I've spoiled it all for him um, but I really really enjoyed that one. Then I bought and DNF'd Some Kids I Taught and What They Taught Me by Kate Clanchy. <sighs> I think I heard about this book from Hannah's channel on Let's Talk About Books Baby and it's about um, a teacher who taught kids and learned some life lessons along the way. Unfortunately this reads as very middle class and the way that she stereotypes and talks about children just didn't sit right with me. She talks about Scottish children in a derogatory way. She talks about Jewish children in a derogatory way. She talks about children of colour in a very stereotypical way. And I just wasn't on board with it. I don't think that these kids actually taught her anything. And if they did, it came too late in the book. But I literally read a chapter and I didn't want to read anymore because it was just too, I don't know, it read like a Tory to me. If the camera angle is different it's because I just knocked it because I am dumb and clumsy so I'm sorry. Uh, but the next book that I hauled and read during the month was After the Silence by Louise O'Neill and I gave that three stars. So this book takes place on an island off the coast of Ireland and my accent really messes that up. Um, but it is a true crime documentary that is following the murder of a girl at a party 10 years before and everyone in the community thinks they know who did it but the documentary is trying to find out the actual culprit and what happened that night because nobody knows. So it follows um, the main character who was at the party that night, she was hosting it and it is a really good portrayal of domestic abuse and all of the different forms that it can take. I found it really, really haunting and dark and emotional. So if this is something that would trigger you, please don't read this book. As well as the domestic abuse, it also looked at uh, post-colonialism, it looked at racism, it looked at feminism, it looked at postpartum depression. So it really did dive into all of these different topics and gave them the time that they needed to be processed, to be understood, to be explored. The only reason I gave it a three star rating is because it was quite predictable and the outcome of the murder was kind of foreshadowed I guess for quite a while so I didn't find it surprising in that way and it's supposed to be a mystery thriller but I did really enjoy it so I am going to read some more from her in the future. The next book I hauled and read was Women Don't Know You Pretty which is by Florence Given. I gave this one five stars so that is my second five star book of the month. Um, this is a non-fiction read um, that explores feminism and um, how the world wants women to fit into it. I got a lot out of this book and I talked about it at length in my new year reading vlog so I'll link that down below but it is something that I'm definitely going to be reading again in the future because it is just it's really powerful and I'm glad that I read it so um, check out that reading vlog for my full thoughts. And the last book that I bought and read this month was A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. This was so that I could um, get the prompt for the buzzword-a-thon which was dream so dream is in a midsummer the night's dream and I gave this one three stars this was just really fun and silly and I think I read it in high school but yeah I think I would class it as like a romp it's just quite silly quite bizarre a fun read I really liked it I think I probably prefer the tempest over a midsummer night's dream I haven't read too many Shakespeare plays but I would say tempest top tier and then it would be A Midsummer Night's Dream, Hamlet is way down at the bottom and then I think I'm gonna have to go through my bookshelves to see which are the ones I've read. I don't think I've read many. So if my maths is correct that means that my TBR has 22 points this month. Oh that's a lot of books. But I'm gonna rally and we're gonna kick my TBR's butt. So I read Diamond Fire by Ilona Andrews. This is the novella that takes place between books three and four in the Hidden Legacy series. And it's basically Catalina Baylor, who is Nevada's sister, planning Connor and Nevada's wedding. It's a, it's a romance series. The romance is all about Connor and Nevada. So that's not a spoiler. You know they're gonna get together because of romance. 
Um, but I thought this was a really fun and short insight into what Catalina's books are going to be like. I really liked her voice, but again, it was a little bit formulaic, so I gave it three stars. Then I read Little Men by Louisa May Alcott, and I gave it two stars. In fact, I think I gave it one star. How many stars did I give it? I gave it one star. I do not give many one stars because I usually give up on them way before it gets to that point. But this book is so boring. Basically, it takes place like 10 years after Little Women and Good Wives. It follows Jo and the school that she set up with her husband and all of the kids that are within it. And I just thought it was really bland. It was really bland. The religious overtones were just smacking you over the head. It was formulaic. It didn't have anything interesting to say. Personally, I felt it didn't have anything interesting to say. And it just read as a typical moral story. It didn't have any of the magic and the sweetness that I loved so much about Little Women itself. So yeah, one star. Then I read That's Not What Happened by Cody Keplinger. This was a two star read. And although it has all of the trademarks of a typical Cody Keplinger book, so she looks at some really hard hitting topics through a high school setting, that was kind of it for me. Although the characters were fully formed, the rest of the book fell pretty flat. So the main character goes on a crusade trying to tell the story of what happened. Oh, I should probably tell you what happened myself. This is a school shooting book um, told from a point of view of one of the survivors. And um, it should have been an amazing emotional read. But the main character, like I said, goes on a crusade to tell the truth about what happened. But she does this by trying to harass the other survivors and tell their story. When they tell her multiple times, I'm not comfortable with this. I don't want to talk about it. Leave me alone. Stop trying to drag me into this. And she just keeps going. The structure as well was really confusing. It would hop and jump between timelines and sometimes that would happen mid-scene. So I would be reading and think we're in the present day and then it would hop back to three years before and it was just really confusing. There was also a subplot that completely disappeared um, about a local pastor who um, goes on a crusade as well really to try and bring this girl back to the light because she is talking about a girl who was murdered by the school shooter. It's kind of been turned into a Christian martyr by the community. So yeah, this was much, very much a case of an excellent book that just wasn't executed well for me. I need to move position because I'm getting cramp. The next book I read was Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi and I'm in the minority of booktube here. I give it two stars. Although it's a really interesting concept of a cafe where you can go back in time, but you can only go back to a point in time where someone else has visited the cafe, you can't move from your seat and you have to come back to the future before the, the coffee gets cold. The coffee. This book reads like a play and it was actually written as a play originally, so I think that's probably where that comes from. But there are almost like stage directions in place, so this is what the scene looks like. This character is here, this character is here, this character is here, this character walks in. It's very much tell and not show, which is something that I don't like to see in books. And some of the stories were very powerful, but the narrative itself, the narrative style, made it really easy for me to disconnect. The next book that I read was Other Words for Home by Jasmine Wager, and this I gave four stars. It was just so good. Um, this is a verse novel that follows Jude and her mother as they travel from Syria to America and what happens when they arrive. The book also acknowledges that just as there are so many different ways out of Syria, there are also many different experiences for Arab Americans. So from the moment I met Jude and Fatima and Layla, I just wanted to sit down with them and have a big huge bowl of popcorn and watch some cheesy rom-coms because these girls were just so precious. The verse itself, even though I have read a Jasmine Waga um, novel before, I haven't read any verse from her and I think this is her first verse novel. Um, but the verse really allowed the emotion to punch through in 
these subtle moments in the big moments and yeah I think this is required reading for everybody. I loved it. The next book I read was Vampires Never Get Old which is a anthology of vampire stories really edited by Zoraida Cordova and Natalie C. Parker. Although the reviews aren't great for this one I give it four stars. I loved how they explored all of the different tropes and myths that surround vampirism um, and they do that through the lens of uh, colonialism, exploitation, grief, climate change, ableism. It just, it was fantastic. I talked about this one more in my New Year reading vlog so check that out down below if you are interested. But I really really liked this one. I was so surprised and um, I will definitely be rereading in the future and also checking out some more of these authors that I hadn't read. The next four books I'm going to talk about are all talked about in detail in my winter hibernation readathon vlog. So that was The Girl and the Ghost by Hannah Alkath. I gave this one four stars and this is a middle grade about a girl whose grandmother dies and the demon that is attached to her grandmother goes and attaches itself to Soraya and it is a very dark emotional story about the relationships that we crave and the ones that we should run away from. Then I read Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. This is all about Melody at her coming of age party and the family members that surround her. Um, Melody is a child of a teen mother so the relationships are really complex and um, intricate and I go into this in a lot more detail in my reading vlog but I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed it and I will definitely be reading more Jacqueline Woodson. Then I read Mr. Loverman by Bernadine Neveristo. Bernadine Neveristo at this point I'm going to be buying all of her backlist, all of her future books because she just knows how to tell a story. Um, again I go into this in more detail in my vlog but I thought this was fantastic and I loved how it looked at marriage and finding your joy. Um, and this follows a man called Barry or Barrington and um, he is a man who is 74 years old and he's been having a relationship with his best friend Morris since he was 14. And he has been married for about 40 to 50 years at this point to his wife Carmel and it really deep dives into their relationships and basically about Barry and Morris trying to find their happy ending. It was just so precious. Hi guys, it's Edith and Becca. Um, I completely forgot that I missed out a DNF, which was Eyes on Me by Rachel Harris. I think it's about a girl who has to take salsa lessons because she's stressed, it's a YA romance. I didn't really think much of it and I only got about a chapter in, um, but the numbers are still the same, so it is still 16 points for me. And the last book I read was The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This was a reread for me as part of my book club that I have with some friends and it held up. I'm always nervous when I read a five star book again because I'm like, are my expectations too high? Am I going to absolutely hate it? Am I going to pick up on some things that I didn't enjoy? But oh, TJ Klune just came through. So if my maths is correct, and I'm not holding out much hope. I should be on 16 points because a reread does not count towards my tally and my TBR should be on 22 points. If I were to stop the video here my TBR would be in the lead and I would be lagging behind but I unhauled 32 books this month. I scoured my bookshelves, I scoured my Kindle to look for books that Maybe that I picked up because I felt like I had to or books that no longer interested in me so like some family sagas or some non-fiction that I wasn't bothered in, some books that my friends who have similar reading tastes really steered me away from. Um, so with all that in mind the final score is 48 to 22. I win. My TBR loses. You big loser. I had a lot of fun doing this video, although I'm now exhausted because that was a lot of books to go through. Um, I really enjoyed doing this video. So let's see next month if my TBR comes back and beats me. It's not going to happen. 
Um, if you're interested in the video, let me know down below. Let me know if you love roller derby because we have so much to talk about. Um, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.